Hey everyone, and welcome back to Dead Mall Walking. A few weeks ago, during a trip to the area, I visited Resorts World, not for some reason Resort World Singular, on the outskirts of Birmingham. It's owned by the Genting Group, a conglomerate that operates resort and casino complexes across Asia and the Americas. If I remember rightly, there used to be a corridor through to the other side of the mall here that's since been blocked off. We'll come back to that. Opened in 2015, this is Genting's first foray into the European market, and it's a doozy. The complex is home to an outlet mall, hence this video, 18 bars, a ton of restaurants, a spa, an IMAX cinema, and a luxury hotel designed in conjunction with a Feng Shui master. It's a short walk from both Birmingham Airport and Birmingham International Train Station. I call this video a double feature because I walked the mall twice, once during the day and once at midnight via the NEC or National Exhibition Centre. Because parts of the complex such as the hotel and casino are open 24 hours a day, the mall is accessible all through the night. But we'll get to that later. It's home to some interesting stores, like this off-the-wall homewares chain that seems to be cropping up in several UK outlets at the minute. Presumably, since everything they sell looks pretty heavy, it's the type of place you go last, right before you head back to the car. The outlet mall also has some other brands that I'm not used to seeing in places like this, including a Carhartt outlet which is coming up on the right just after the North Face. As far as I can tell, this is one of just a handful of Carhartt outlet stores in the whole of Europe, so its inclusion here is kind of interesting in and of itself. I'm no food blogger, but I wanted to take a second to highlight a really nice lunch I had at Karage. This microchain, with two locations in Birmingham, is the first in the UK and the rest of Europe to focus specifically on Japanese fried chicken, which is served up alongside bubble tea. And it was very good. This isn't sponsored content by the way, but I would definitely take any free food they wanted to send my way. Although the complex itself seems to be doing well, the casino is often rated as one of the best in the UK. The same doesn't seem to be true of the mall. As you can see from this quieter corridor here, which is on the other side of that wall we saw at the beginning of the video. They've consolidated most of their stores into the main corridor we just walked through, bringing in a bowling alley that's yet to open, an escape room and an arcade to fill in some of the gaps. These join the complex's existing leisure facilities, including Bear Grylls Adventure, which somehow offers indoor skydiving, archery, shooting, shark diving, and high ropes, all in one place. According to the Birmingham Mail, Resorts World has lost two thirds of its shops since it opened, which puts it squarely in dead mall territory. They've done a fairly good job of disguising this though, thinking outside the box to come up with ways to rework the vacant wing. We'll see how well it pays off when more of it opens up next year. I really like this mural showcasing some of the stuff available in the mall but I couldn't help but wonder if they brought the artist back to rework it every time existing tenants left or new ones arrived. Maybe I didn't really give this mall a fair shot. Visiting on a Friday morning it was never exactly going to be bustling with customers, but I think I got a fair impression of it overall. Here's another look at this weird and wonderful gift company store. 
If anyone's after a giant cuddly lion or a butler trying not to pee, you know where to go. Right now, the mall feels to me like an afterthought. I can't imagine coming here unless you wanted something from a specific store like Nike, Carhartt, or Levi's. Parking isn't cheap unless you buy something, and the interesting cruise ship design of the exterior, which you'll be able to see in a couple of external shots later in the video, doesn't carry through to the inside at all. I read a review online that said this place is not sure what it wants to be, and I would definitely agree with that. Things start to get very liminal spacey as I walked back from the train station through the NEC and then the mall. And it got me thinking. What exactly are these commercial centres when they're not serving their intended purpose? During the pandemic, for example, the NEC was a national exhibition centre without any exhibitions. Its vending machines had nobody to vend to. My mind went back to the enormous Forest Fair village which has just one or two stores remaining inside. Is it even fair to call somewhere like that a mall anymore? And if not, what do we call it? And what's the mall we're about to see, which still had pop music blaring through the speakers after midnight, bulletproof by LaRue, when all of its stores are closed? It's not exactly public space, but it isn't doing anything useful either. I recently had a long conversation, one that I wish I'd recorded for posterity, with Sadiq Mohammed, a lecturer at the University of Kent. He posited the idea that we're fascinated by dead malls because they're another kind of ruined porn that we enjoy looking at. That it gives us some kind of perverse thrill to see the machine of capitalism being destroyed and the source of our alienation being undone. His point of view might be a bit too bleak for me. I'm of a more nostalgic and sentimental school of thought. But it's an interesting one. Companies like Amazon and Apple seem too big to fail right now, but there was a time when that was true of Toys R Us, Blockbuster, Circuit City and Tower Records too. Maybe on some level we enjoy seeing a reminder that no brand is infallible. Or maybe we're desperately trying to recapture the fading echoes of our own youth. Thanks for checking out this video, which is the first I've published since I've joined the YouTube Partner Program. Your support is hugely appreciated, and I hope you'll keep liking and subscribing. You can also follow my Instagram, which is linked in the description below. Until next time, goodbye from Resorts World Birmingham, and from this curious goose.